Right now at six, construction is not slowing down in Colorado. State, because of course Colorado is seeing a lot of building right now and will over the coming decades. State leaders are trying to make sure it's being done with the climate in mind. It means we're going to have more efficient buildings that use less energy from the from the day they open. But how do you weigh climate with cost? You can't impose co codes that have higher costs. Wild horse activists have their voices heard outside BLM offices. The Bureau of Land Management is kind of gone rogue. We share their message as horses continue to die under BLM's watch. Plus adding incentive for going electric. I'm just so happy Denver is getting in there and trying to get people more off the roads. Thanks for joining us tonight for Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jacqueline Allen. Hundreds of bills to get through, just over 48 hours to get it all done. So as of this morning, state lawmakers still had 240 bills left for discussion at the Capitol. That's about a third of the 657 total bills introduced this session. One of those bills would implement new green building codes for cities and counties. This is an issue that played out a couple of months back in Louisville as Marshall fire victims worried that new requirements would add to their rebuilding costs. Well, today the first rebuilding permit was received in unincorporated Boulder County. Last week, the first permit was given in uh, original town Superior. And as Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez reports, this bill would have exceptions for Coloradans rebuilding after a disaster. If you were going to take a picture of the Denver skyline these days, it's hard to do it without a construction crane. Just about everywhere you look, new homes, new buildings, a whole new look. With all this change, state lawmakers are considering one of their own. House Bill 1362 calls for local governments to adopt more energy efficiency codes for construction moving forward. Right now, residential and commercial buildings make up 14% of the state's greenhouse gas emissions. If you do it up front, when you design and construct, it's way cheaper than if you try to do a retrofit. The bill calls for a gradual shift. By 2026, lawmakers want those codes to meet 2021 international energy standards. Homes and buildings would need to have the capability for solar and EV charging stations, but not necessarily the parts. You need to have all the wiring in place, the conduit, all the infrastructure that's going to allow this transition. But the balance between the climate and costs can be tough. Within the town of Superior, we realize that the efficiency codes have a significant impact on the costs. Neil Shaw knows that viscerally. 378 homes in his community burned down in the Marshall Fire, leaving 378 families scrambling. What we decided to do is let the homeowners that are rebuilding opt into either the code that was in place when the house burnt down 2018 or the new code for all new builds is 2021. The problem with that, though, is that many insurance companies are opting for the 2018 standards because it's cheaper. Louisville walked back some of its own green construction codes after that fire, and the bill does have a carve out for natural disasters, something Neil supports. Those that are rebuilding need to be offered as many choices as possible. Uh, but if we're building something new, I think we can get a lot more aggressive. The bill has had a lot of opposition, though, from Republicans, builders, even some counties worrying about the cost. And it's gone through a lot of rewrites trying to appease these groups. It's not going to escalate costs for new construction, you know, over and above 1%. With just a few days left in the session, it will be a rush to the finish if they're going to rewrite these building codes. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. Now, the city of Fort Collins has already moved forward with green building codes. Last month, city council there approved two bills. One strengthens energy efficiency requirements for single, and multifamily, and commercial buildings. And then the other requires EV charging infrastructure for new builds. There are several other big bills we've been following still up for debate at the Capitol. Today, the House debated an amendment to the fentanyl bill. Megan expects this how the House will not pass the bill with that amendment, which would send it to a special committee conference. The Senate was scheduled to hold a second reading on the producer responsibility bill. That bill would require companies to pay for the waste they create. And the money would then be used for a statewide recycling program. There was a third reading on a towing bill today as well. That would require a towing bill of rights, putting restrictions on towing companies. As of last check, that bill was still being debated. An arrest has been made in the triple murder in East Denver from two weeks ago. Denver police today announced the arrest of this man, Elijah Hood being held for investigation on three counts of first degree murder. Police say they received multiple tips connecting him to the shooting off North Dunkirk Street. Denise Hood, her grandson Donnie Allen Jr. and his child, Makai Paramallon, all were killed. Police believe Denise Hood is the aunt of Elijah. CPW continue their search for a man who drowned at Cherry Creek State Park Saturday evening. And today there are four boats on the water searching for the victim. CPW says the man was not wearing a life jacket when he fell off a tube that was being pulled by a boat and he went underwater. 
Two more wild horses died today at the BLM facility in Canyon City. That brings the two-week total to 121 deaths since an equine flu outbreak began. The horses were rounded up by the BLM last summer, and about a dozen wild horse activists showed up today at the BLM offices in Lakewood to protest those roundups. Some protesters say the BLM is using overpopulation as an excuse for the roundups. They're saying they're starving. I've never seen a single picture of a wild horse starving, only big fat ones. But they say that they're protecting the range and they're protecting the horses. And in the case of Sandwash Basin, three weeks later, tens of thousands of sheep were in the horse management area. And the BLM has admitted that only some of the horses rounded up last summer were vaccinated against equine flu. Well, Colorado wants to increase broadband internet access for rural parts of our state. And today, President Biden announced a new program that could help. Now, 20 internet providers have agreed to either increase internet speeds or cut prices. Low-income Americans can also enroll in the Affordable Connectivity Program, which would provide high-speed internet plans for no more than $30 a month. High-speed internet is not a luxury any longer. It's a necessity. And that's why the bipartisan infrastructure law included $65 billion to make sure we expand access to broadband internet in every region of the country, urban, suburban, and rural. And there are tens of thousands of Coloradans set to take advantage of this new program. According to educationsuperhighway.org, there are 219,000 Coloradan households that have access to internet but can't afford to connect. And nationwide and here in Colorado, communities of color have the least amount of access to broadband. There is a frenzy in Denver for e-bikes. The surge is thanks to a new city program that gives residents hundreds of dollars off the purchase of a new e-bike. Denver 7's Patrick Perez checked in to see how that's going. It's by no means a new way to get around town, but much of the interest in electric bikes in the past few weeks has been. I have a son who lives in Pittsburgh, and he emailed me and said, by the way, do you know about this? I had no idea. Joni Setsfield is one of more than 2,600 Denverites who have applied for a climate action rebate from the city and county of Denver. The program gives Denver residents an instant voucher worth either $400 or $1,200, depending on their income level, to buy a new e-bike. We're getting requests from people people that were not traditionally looking at an electric bike. Hushman Morefi, owner of eBikes USA, says his store and country club has gotten a real jolt in business since the Denver program went online on April 22nd. We are seeing a younger demographics, people that are living in the city that are not traditional electric bike riders. His store is one of nine others, at least for now, that's partnered with Denver as part of this effort to help residents save money on gas and maintenance and to help people like Joni ride more comfortably. I think my knees are getting a little bad. It's a little tougher getting up hills. She got her voucher about 10 days after applying for it, which the city says is the current turnaround time because of all of this increased demand. Her voucher of 1200 bucks is helping her make careful choices. I think I can find the right fit. I can find the right price, anything additional, it's well worth it to me because I'm giving up that cycle and starting a brand new bike and it's basically the same. And with some e-bikes going for $1,400, buying one for a fraction of the price and on the city's dime is a no-brainer. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. All right, if you live in Denver and you'd like to apply for an instant voucher, we have all the information you need on the DenverChannel.com. Funding for this program, by the way, comes from Denver's Climate Protection Fund, which exists because of a voter-approved quarter of a percent increase in sales and use tax back in 2020. Well, more proof Northern Colorado is growing. There are plans to build 1,500 new single-family homes in Johnstown. That small town just off I-25 has been growing steadily for the past decade. Now, currently, 15,000 people live there. The town's mayor says new development will bring in new business, which will benefit current and future residents. They don't have to travel out of town to do their shopping. So it's a, it's a big advantage to the people that live here now. And, and I think they understand that. It's just getting over the stigma of growth. The mayor also says he is focused on making sure the expansion is done right, accompanied by proper streets and infrastructure, and keeping local businesses alive. More fire concerns for the next several days, including temperatures will get to 90 degrees. Testing out the future of health care. What I hope to uncover is, can we translate this to the bedside? How high-tech virtual training is helping nurses in the real world. Taking off that pressure allows you to work in a 
really comfortable environment and not be afraid to make mistakes. Plus, the Avs brought their brooms to Nashville. We're looking ahead to a potential first-round sweep next.